Lord. Well, if you're unhappy tonight, say amen. amen. A lot of you look unhappy. Now, those of you that are happy, say amen. How many don't hurt what I said the first time? I said, if you're unhappy, say amen. Well, at least you're honest. And you just proved once again that most people don't listen to preachers anyway. So see there? <laughs> My name is Rick Scarborough. I'm the founder and uh, president of Vision America. We uh, had the delight of, uh, of co-hosting uh, this event along with Ray Myers and his tea party. Uh, Ray didn't introduce himself. I think most of you perhaps know who he is. But our paths have crossed uh, sovereignly on a number of occasions. Uh, Ray is one of these guys that, that uh, every church would be blessed to have a, a hundred of. He's a layman in love with Jesus who has taken his faith and taken a step out on the water. And God is now blessing what he's doing with a, a tremendous move of God through that local tea party. Yeah. Folks, uh, about a year ago, I shared this with a smaller group. About a year ago, one of my board members, who's a very strong supporter of what we do, said, Rick, I'll, I'll front hiring uh, four staff members to do nothing but set a platform for you to go around and try to stir up the Tea Party. Now, this time a year ago, Tea Parties had disappeared. Uh, in 2008, folks, uh, our ministry, we work in a lot of states with pastors. That's uh, our Vision America is of the pastor, by the pastor, for the pastor. Uh, our sole uh, effort is to reach out to pastors and that's why it's, uh, it's easy for me tonight to defer to Raphael Cruz, and you're going to hear that's the burden of his heart. And God has raised him up uh, to speak to pastors across the country. You're going to hear a, an incredible word from God in just a few moments. But in the midst of traveling the length and breadth of this country, uh, working with pastors all over, uh, we laid a foundation that in 2008 we believed was going to, to result in a sea change. Uh, we invested more than $400,000 and hundreds of hours of effort in the state of Florida alone. Now, to refresh your memory, uh, when the, it became obvious that uh, the more conservative of the two candidates, both candidates left a lot to be desired, but in the, the more conservative of the two, it became obvious that uh, he had lost that election. It wasn't three or four more days before Florida was finally conceded. By that time, uh, enough votes had been counted and it wasn't going to make any difference. And so a concession was made. But in Florida, uh, when they finally got through counting the votes, there was an 80,000 vote margin between a conservative candidate uh, winning that state and a very liberal, the most liberal president this country has ever seen uh, winning that state. And I believe it was because pastors were mobilized. But even with those valiant efforts, we lost. By the way, most people believe that there was more than 100,000 fraudulent votes in Florida. So we don't know even yet, but what uh, we, we didn't win that effort. But we had 2,000 pastors make a commitment to register their people to vote, to preach at least one sermon on, on a Sunday before election on why Christians should vote. <laughs> Not as Republican or Democrat, but as followers of Jesus. Hope you heard that. Amen. Uh, we don't. Uh, we're not uh, uh, working for any party. Both parties are uh, desperately lacking in advancing kingdom principles. Amen. Both of them have abandoned any any resolve whatsoever uh, to right the ship of state without a, a miracle trans uh, uh, happening. This country is not going to survive where we are right now. Amen. I will say this. Time has proven that Ted Cruz was right on Obamacare. <laughs> he stood alone. And his voice was a, a lone voice against even his own party. Wouldn't you love to see the day when uh, members of, of uh, the Republican Party were as virulent in their attacks on people who are destroying the Constitution as they are on their own party? When somebody tries to do what's right? But there's where we are as a nation. But this is not about Republican or Democrat. It's about getting Christians to stand up and do what's right. And so I honestly, after 2008, began to wonder, should I just uh, go back into the past and try to disciple uh, some believers? It's over. I was that demoralized. And then out of nowhere, 
I began hearing about lay people taking to the streets. You know, the Bible, or excuse me, the Constitution says that in that very first amendment, freedom of speech, that our Congress and those who ratified that Constitution would guarantee the citizenry the right to pursue religion however we choose to pursue it. And that the pulpit would always be unfettered. You know why they demanded that before they would finally sign the Constitution and lay down some of their sovereignty for a federal government? Do you want to know why those 13 colonies decided to become 13 United States? Because if the government hate went haywire, there would always be a free pulpit. And the pulpit would stand up and confront the charlatans in elected office. Call them by name as they did for centuries in this country till the present generation. But there was also two other groups named in that First Amendment. A free church, a free press. If the church won't do it, maybe some enterprising reporter after fame for himself will reveal the unrighteousness in government. So a free unfettered press. But they added a third part of that. If the pulpits grow silent and the press becomes willing conspirators hiding the truth, then the people themselves have the right to redress their grievances. They can take to the streets. <coughs> and in 2009, you saw that happen. Tea parties popped up across this country. No organization, no connection. And in the greatest sweep of, con of, of incumbent congressmen out on, their, on the streets where they belong, replaced by conservative men and women, and many of them are principal people of faith, the Tea Party movement was born. Everybody thought 2010 would be a, a, a similar kind of result. But the Tea Party movement went away. So this very wealthy board member said, Rick, I'll give you $15,000 a month if you hire the staff and begin finding out what happened to the Tea Party. And you know what? About the time we got started, we have a website, teapartyunity.org. Look at it before you go to bed at night. We've connected hundreds of Tea Party leaders across the nation, and we've been rallying the troops. But here's what we found out. Tea Party movement didn't go away. They just started getting hauled into courts of law. They, they, they fell under the direct assault of the Internal Revenue Service, which is now going to use more power to coerce your behavior through health care. And once that exposure came, the Tea Party movement began resurfacing. Folks, tonight, what we want to say to you as pastors and Tea Party leaders is that we've got to work together to save a country. Amen. The Tea Party movement should no longer be marginalized. We need to embrace those brave men and women involved in that. Encourage some pastors. The best members you've got are Tea Party members. If you'll love on them and give them a little bit of encouragement. <laughs> Instead of making them meet over in the corner and never say anything when they're in church. Well, you're going to hear a man, from, I believe, sent to this country from a foreign shore to give birth to a son who will give us all hope, I believe. We can pray for him. Keep that edge intact so he's not destroyed. But this man of God also has a word for the clergy. And so without further ado, I want you to give a warm... By the way, your pastor, those of you who are members of this church, Brother Dell, uh, he's in the hospital. I think most of you are aware of that. Uh, Raphael, he has no liver. At our, excuse me, he had a liver transplant, excuse me. And so uh, infections are very dangerous for him. The last time he got an infection, he was hospitalized for eight days before he recovered. And so he's... Uh, He's laying flat on his back, but I'll tell you, I've received several uh, texts from him. He's praying for tonight. His wife is praying for us. And I want to pause and pray for him before we go any further. Amen. But he's only, uh, he's not here because he's in bed, in a hospital bed. Uh, and I also want to give all of you fair warning that I'll be preaching in his stead here tomorrow, uh, which I am honored to do. But let's pray for him right now. 